All right. Um, so there's been a, a. I actually got introduced to Transmart a few years back. I was at a Personalized Medicine World Congress meeting, and I was sitting with Brian Athey, the Chief Science Officer um, for Transmart, and um, we were just chatting, and he was talking about uh, his efforts to uh, work with Transmart and and what a challenge a lot of folks have with getting quote unquote getting data into the system. Um, that was the first challenge that I'd sort of heard of, and we, then we ended up getting into a much deeper conversation. And, and in the end, uh, um, Bioinformatics joined uh, Transmart as a member, and I became a board member. Uh, and the more I've learned, uh, what I've been uh, getting a sense of is there are big challenges uh, facing the Transmart community today. There are also some pretty significant risks where there could be some big letdowns in a couple of years. But there are big opportunities, and I think with these sorts of meetings where we're all getting together, touching base, and talking about these things, we're going to avoid those uh, those risks and um, see beautiful outcomes with Transmart. So the first challenge, uh, which I would like to say is trivial, unfortunately it's really not. And in fact, um, the group that's coming up next, Nick and his gang, are going to talk in quite a bit more detail about limits of the existing ETL. Uh, just getting data into Transmart. Um, right now, there's a lot of human effort that's often involved or outside work with uh, sort of building your own ETL methodology to do the data mapping and translation to get the data clean. So, you know, the, the kettle script or the TM loader inside Transmart is um, pretty thin, and th there's a lot of discussion around what to do about that, and I'll talk a little bit about, a little bit about it. But my one of my big um, arguments will be that there are extremely mature ETL technologies um, that have been out for a while, and um, you know I think Transmart wants to get good at, at providing a stable environment where different ETLs maybe can feed in. But uh, that's there's a, there's still challenges there, um, uh, and one of the big some of the big issues are lost security, n not uh, tagging provenance onto data, uh, missing context, not keeping track of curation decisions. And then um, there's a lot of interest from some of the uh, pharma industry in having Transmart as an enterprise application. So there's a lot that's not there uh, for, for an enterprise application. OK, so let's say you get the data in. Great. Uh, the data needs to be, there's a lot of different language in the space, whether you want to say normalized, aligned, harmonized. There are slightly different meanings to those. But uh, just using, for example, lexical matching or uh, trying to align your data sets with vocabularies like mapping.txt files inside uh, Transmart, that, that's not going to be enough if you're working with any serious uh, integration project. If you've got a couple small studies, um, you know, even doing cross-study uh, searches is not trivial. If you're going to look at, for example, uh, something that bioinformatics is doing right now, you know, integrating 25 years of, of uh, clinical data, a couple different EMR systems, all kinds of uh, genomic and proteomic assessments, mm -hmm. images, etc. You know, just using lexical matching is, is not going to work. It's not enough. <clears throat> the little picture here, you know, this is a this is a real simple example of the sort of thing you, you'll see. Um, the, the, the this is actually a, a real case from some work we've done. Uh, this is this is one person. It's the same person. They, they have dual diagnosis, whether that's correct or not is a different question, of, of Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's. And just getting those two people to be, quote, the same person, not having redundant data, et cetera, it's not trivial. So we're talking about challenges and risks now. This is the sort of scary stuff. Then there's another big risk, which is let's say you do a good job, you get your data clean, you can actually do cross uh, studies, cross trials, queries inside Transmart, good job. Uh, but then there's this dream, well, okay, let's say uh, uh, Pfizer's doing a nice integration, and let's say Abby's doing a nice integration, and three, four, or five years down the road, you want to collaborate around that data. It's not like, well, I'm using Transmart and you're using Transmart, so all of our data will magically connect. That's 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 a beautiful dream, but that's not uh, that doesn't happen automatically by using Transmart. That's kind of like saying we've got the same shape house, high speed uh, 
English and you speak uh, German, and since we're in the, we're sitting in the same room, then we can talk to each other. That's not <laughs> that's not the way it works. Um, so uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, data methods that are designed to align to new data sets or new standards more efficiently. All right. So that's just uh, not to uh, throw a big bomb in the middle of this, but just to say, hey, you know, there are a number of, of challenges and risks that this community is facing. I think this has all been discussed over the week. Um, let's talk about some different types of solutions. There are a lot of people doing uh, work already on ETL methods. I know uh, even Rancho, they do a lot of manual curation. They're working on some ETL workflows. I think we're going to hear about some more. You need to have, uh, you need to be able to keep provenance. You need to have rules that it can, can expand uh, to new data sets. You need to have alerts for unexpected data. I'm talking about enterprise applications. Uh, if you're just working in a little university lab and you're doing a project or two with Transmart, you may not need all of this. Some small data you want to connect and do work. And that can be very valuable, and you can get great discovery. But if you're trying to do real translational research, spanning broad uh, arrays of data from, as they say in translational research, you know, the advanced uh, analytical and research bins all the way to the most rem remote bedside, right? Uh, that you're going to be integrating that sort of data in, in a way that's uh, enterprise. You're going to need uh, a, a real workflow. Um, you want to be able to uh, provide a lot of algorithmic and inference support for your ETL, that's relating to the lexical matching is not enough. And you need to be able to keep track of your curation decisions that are made. You're going to go to FDA later and uh, put some big findings in. They're going to say, well, how'd you come up with this data? And if you say, well, we had some smart graduate students who, you know, made a lot of tra transformations and did a lot of things, and we don't really remember who that was or something, that, that doesn't fly. Okay. So um, let's say you get the data in, you, you, have all, you have a real enterprise workflow, the data needs to be usefully searchable. The term semantic, it means a couple of different things. It's a formal open standard, it's a World Wide Web Consortium standard which is designed for aligning data for interoperability, but it also means semantic. In other words, data needs to be semantically aligned and they, and they need to mean the same thing. Um, there are a lot of capabilities that's, that still aren't in Transmart. I think there's discussion about, you know, do we want to try to build this stuff into Transmart or do we want to rely on outside tools and methods and let Transmart call those? Those are just different interesting questions. But you need to be able to do a better job getting alignment with pre-existing standards and ontologies. You need to have preferred and alternate labels and synonyms. Those need to continue to grow and you need to be able to um, uh, to get the sort of alignment across all the diverse uh, ways of describing a patient and describing a disease, you know, is it resagiline or is it Agilect? One data set may call it Azilect, another one may call it resagiline. Um, is this the same person or, or not? You're going to be applying methods in your workflow and in your data modeling environment to get this sort of alignment. So then the outcome is something that looks a little bit more like this in uh, inside Transmart. So you've got common uh, column IDs, you've got common terminology, you've got, you should be able to, to also query on preferred synonyms or labels. You know, you may enter M, uh, sex M, and it should be able to find male, or that's not a great example, but that sort of thing. Or you may want to enter Azelect, and it'll bring back Resagilent, that's a better example. Okay, then the, again, the bigger risk which is coming up the pike is connecting to other new data, particularly if you've already got a lot of data in Transmart, someone else already has a lot of data in Transmart, or you need to extend to a lot of new sources. You don't want to have to refactor the database schema. Uh, you want to be able to do that as, as effectively as you can. Um, that's where I would all argue coming from, oh, by the way, I should say, I'm, I'm Bob Stanley, CEO of Bioinformatics. Nice to meet everyone. Uh, we provide uh, a software and services for semantic alignment, duration, harmonization of data, and putting it into applications like Transmart and others. Um, so I'm, I'm talking about what we do. You want to have a data model environment which is designed to get your data semantically uh, aligned. Whether you want to call that normalized, you do need to normalize on things like units, etc. Um, you need to deal with termin terminology, and you need to deal with relationships. 
will use uh, a, a big set of ontologies. There's some argument that you know you can have a big broad sort of dumb uh, ontology that you can use for most things, and that's a great starting point for integration. But if you really want to be doing a good job with complex data and you want to get deep uh, integration, you're going to need to be picking from subsets of different ontologies for vocabularies, uh, most likely, or taxonomies. So here are some examples, um, and we can I can actually show you some demos work. For example, we've done with AstraZeneca and others, which will show you how you can drag uh, something like this into a system and apply a combination of lexical matching of pattern-based uh, inference, where you're getting weights on patterns. So the, the, you, if you if you look for the letter K, it could be potassium, it could be kilo, it could be Kelvin. It can mean a lot of different things. If you can look at context. You see it's a dietary supplement and an element. You get a pretty good idea that K stands for potassium. So you need to be able to do that pattern-based matching. Um, and, um, and, and so take advantage of these different methods, math, uh, ontologies and vocabularies, and inference. The, the, that's giving a lot of semi-technical detail. I tried to keep the discussion at a fairly high level today. Um, the, the outcome is the, as close as you can get to automated uh, uh, alignment. So you want to be able to drag different resources into a system, get things to connect as much as they can without manual intervention, and then pop up outliers so that you can make decisions on, on what you need to do with those. That uh, brings down the time and effort to, quote, realign your data with other data significantly. And that's the sort of thing that's going to need to happen. Okay. I'm also trying to make this talk a little bit uh, a little bit quicker. We got a late start today, so I'm I'm kind of pushing us along a little. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll be my best to make maybe my talk short, but please. Okay, great, good. Um, so we've kind of uh, br briefed through some uh, big challenges, just getting getting data in. Most everyone here is familiar with that. Actually, I'll say even getting Transmart installed is a challenge for many people. And along that line, um, I'll mention Ioinformatics has an installer that we posted on GitHub. I know some folks here um, from National Cancer Institute, in fact, Frank, you can talk to, have, have used our installer just to get it installed. Getting data in, not trivial. Making it talk to itself within Transmart, not trivial. If someone thinks it is, you're mistaken. Having that data ready to connect to other uh, Transmart's users' data, another uh, big risk. So we've kind of talked about that. Now we'll talk about solutions a little bit. And I'm already kind of breathing into solutions. You need to be able to apply ontologies, taxonomies, vocabularies easily and effectively. That may be through services because knowledge engineering or doing a good job getting data clean and connected in a way that's useful, it's not something you want a subject matter expert who's a molecular biologist probably to be taking the lead on. You need somebody who understands data modeling. So there probably will be business for the Rancho Biosciences of the world or your smart in-house data science team uh, to be doing that sort of work. But you want to have tools and methods that let you take advantage of resources that are out there uh, so that you can, uh, you can do this much more efficiently. And by the way, the, the talk at, from EBI yesterday, uh, Sri Rarat, I really encourage people to chat and follow up with her. She's an example of a really good knowledge engineer who is uh, familiar with the complexity required to do da good uh, data engineering. And they're using a lot of uh, useful resources at EBI that I'm not hearing a lot about generally in the Transmart community. So those are those are examples of of how you need to bring outside software solutions into the Transmart community. Uh, there are a lot of good open source uh, technologies, and then there are good uh, Ioinformatics uses a lot of open source technologies. We have some of our own uh, software we've built. Um, I'm happy to talk with you about those. Uh, folks like Sri Rarat will too. Um, I'll, I'll argue that you want to bring in a, an actual formal semantic layer if you're going to be doing any serious big data, cross-site, multiple cross-studies types of integration. If you're just going to work with ADNI, ADNI and PPMI and maybe a couple studies, you may not need it. 
but if you, you can just use the mapping text and see what you get and kind of muddle through. But if you're looking for an enterprise application or you're going to be doing a lot of big data integration, I think you need a real, uh, a real semantic environment which is designed to help you curate, normalize, and line your data. So talk a little bit about what we do. Um, Bioinformatics has a, a, a product suite we call Sentient. We have a data modeling tool we call Knowledge Explorer. Um, we like to say we sort of back the dump truck up to the Knowledge Explorer. We dump the data in. Um, we just I just was giving a talk at a conference last week about work we did with AstraZeneca. We had about 40,000 subjects in um, 200 and some studies gathered over a period of about 15 years from a number of different hospitals. You can't believe the diversity you'll find in that data. You know, there's people, there's Donald Duck and Bugs Bunny and people who die before they're born and you know, just anything you can imagine. So you want to kind of put all that into a system that will look for relationships, will look for term uh, matches, and uh, will will give you a rough uh, Certain, uh, environment to start that you can start to explore the data. We actually have a Transmart ontology which looks at some of the basic elements that's, that Transmart makes obvious like study and sample and that sort of thing. So you put the data into the system, you uh, let it start running machine reasoning, lexical matching algorithms, etc. and you put everything you can into the right uh, structure and then uh, things that are outliers, you can get lists. Uh, you can run uh, queries and get lists of data that are matching different levels uh, of closeness to fit to what the pattern or the entity you're looking for. And then you can start to make decisions with the subject matter expert. Uh, is this is this a gene or is there a different kind of protein? You know those sorts of decisions you can make. Um, so that's where you. You want to take advantage of the machine aided identification of semantic inconsistencies, and that's aiding a manual process, which requires some expertise. Um, there are uh, nice tools that we can make available if we have a relationship with someone where, when you find these semantic in inconsistencies, you can pop up a, a simpler web page which just kind of says, "Here's a list of things we don't know what they are. Here's a list of things they might be. Can you can you map to those?" But that's that's sort of the tip of the iceberg, really, for for, for doing the, the data integration. You want to be able to extend the data with additional resources. One of the nice things about, um, quote, I'll just use the term ontologies, they can, people use that kind of rough, roughly, but if you bring in different public ontologies and resources, you actually can get a lot of additional information, so it's really useful to start finding out what pathways, what known diseases, what treatments, what experimental compounds, uh, are being applied uh, associated with the, the gene or protein that's showing some correlation value out of your study. So bringing in these uh, ontology resources, you get a lot of additional benefit along with alignment um, that'll help you with others. Okay. Last but not least, once you've done this data modeling piece, uh, this is inside of some of our technology or you can use others then you want to be posting rules into the ETL pipeline. And that's actually something that we're talking, I'm talking with this few folks at Transmart about making some of our uh, transformation rules available to, uh, to Transmart for different data sets. Um, but those should be growing rules that will address any new data coming in and uh, when something is, uh, is not aligning with the expected rule set, you want to pop up an alert and say, hey, what is this? then you can add a new rule and um, you have sort of a, a human assisted learning. So I mentioned some of the software we work with. Uh, I'll show a few screenshots here. Um, you want to have a visual environment for, for your data modeling efforts, I would propose. It's, uh, it's useful to be able to actually look at the data in the fullness of its meaningful relationships. There has been some talk about tying Transmart directly to the Stanford National Center for Biomedical Ontology's BioPortal. We also do that in our system, so I, I just threw this screenshot in here this morning just to, because of the conversation yesterday. This is the Knowledge Explorer pointing out to BioPortal. It also can point to other web services like uh, the, the um, vocabulary management system at Merck or wherever. Uh, wherever we're looking, then you can pick from dictionaries or ontologies and bring them into the system. So that's very useful to be able to do. 
And then finally, uh, once you get the data uh, modeled in that more co complex environment, you want to be able to surface it, surface it to the subject matter expert and say on a web page, you know, this is what we're getting out of your data. Is this making sense to your expectations? Yes, no, that, that sort of thing. I will say we've got uh, quite a bit of open source uh, tooling uh, behind Sentient Platform. Um, we're using Spark in the back. We work with NIME for our preferred workflow engine, although we also will work with Pipeline Pilot. Um, and so, you know, folks are interested in collaboration around code. Uh, we, we control the source, but we do make it open, open in a sense to, uh, to some people who want to work with it and work with us. I also just um, threw this in this morning for fun. Uh, this was a talk I gave last week with AstraZeneca. Here's an example of, of what a sort of a subset uh, showing some integration can look like. One of the things you'll find if you want to get common identifiers across studies, I know cross-study uh, searching and analysis is something people are interested in here, not being very successful yet, you'll often need to concatenate different identifiers. So in this case, you see the subject ID and the row ID um, sort of they'll, they'll, they'll be put together, and if those are both lining up, then you know you've got the same person. Okay, so now we're kind of in the home stretch. Uh, you're starting with we're kind of, what can be a big mess, and if anyone is going to try to d deny the potential complexity of data coming in to Transmart, you probably haven't been trying to do a lot of translational data integration because it can be a real mess. You want to bring in the staging environment uh, where you have a big sort of soft fuzzy uh, ontology that finds relationships that you, that you can. You want to be able to search on that data, get metrics, reduce the manual uh, requirements for integration, get everything lined up as closely as you can to the Transmart ontology first. Um, but then, uh, th th then you're going to really start moving that staging RDF into your quality data that's going to be suited for, for ETL and the Transmart. And that's using all those uh, tools and methods I mentioned. And always interested in new, new uh, benefits to, to, to automating the integration process. Last but not least, once you've got that data in the semantic data model, uh, reasonably well formed, then you can start getting a little bit of magic out of this environment. That's where you can you can drag in NCI Thesaurus, UMLS, SDTM, CDISC, all the RDF flavors of that, which Ioinformatic has made, and there are a lot of those are available through resources like BioPortal. You can just drag those into the environment, and if your data is well formed and the source is well formed, they'll line up automatically, and and that that really makes people happy. So the the, the first step, the core data modeling, get from the big mess into something reasonably clean, that can be pretty challenging. That's, uh, you know, still requires a lot of expertise, but once you get that reasonable uh, linked data, then aligning, realigning with new partners and that sort of thing becomes that, then you start to get that dream of, you know, we've got our data in Transmart, we've got a semantic layer feeding Transmart, so we can take it out of Transmart and put it into our partner's database much more easily. So aligning and realigning can be real benefit. And this is, you know, I would argue what people are looking for. You know, well-formed data, uh, you're really getting the facts out of what you're looking at. You don't have redundant information, you're not missing information, um, et cetera. This is what goes into Transmart in its schema. All right. Uh, at this point, I think we're pretty clear. You want to reduce the manual intervention required, but you need to have an environment that still allows experts and subject matter experts to take a look at the data in its context, make decisions with provenance kept. You want to have automated ETL. It just needs to be enterprise ETL. That's not anything that is invented. Uh, it's, those techniques exist, but you need to have it, and Transmart doesn't have that right now today. You want to be able to use all the tools that computer science makes available for data curation and integration available to your efforts if you're doing serious translational integration. You need to have a visual environment, algorithmic support, support by thesauri, vocabularies, ontologies, taxonomies, inference, reasoning. You know, if you're, if you're serious about doing big data integration in a complex field like translational research, which by definition should be involving a wide breadth of data, 
you need these tools if you're going to do a good job most efficiently. And then last but not least, I'll argue that you want a data model which is designed for alignment and realignment with new, uh, with, with new standards and methods. Uh, Bioinformatics didn't uh, invent uh, the semantic data model. That was a W3C, World Wide Web Consortium's open standard. MIT and Stanford have put literally decades of work uh, uh, Imperial College also has uh, Dublin, um, you know, so this is a, a technology that was designed from the ground up for uh, global data integration and, and harmonization. So I would propose to you that a little uh, relational database schema with a few vocabulary supporting your effort, that's, that's really not a, a, a mature enterprise both integration environment, which is what Transmart is um, targeting to, to provide. Now I'm, I'm in the real home stretch. Um, we we're talking about that RDF, the, the semantic data model. It's a linked data model. Go to World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, Wikipedia, look up semantic RDF. You'll start to see some of these things. Um, this is a, a, a picture, a lot of people, folks in this room have probably seen this, of all of the data that's available in what they call the linked open data format. Oops. Don't know what happened. 